Guys, the day has finally come. The reveal of the campaign gameplay for Halo Infinite has been released to everyone, and there is a blog to go along with this that provides even more information about Halo Infinite as a game and moving forward with potentially the flighting process being declined. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. <laughs> How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. And if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo Infinite moving forward until release, make sure you guys tap subscribe to the channel so let's get right into the content here. So it has begun. We finally have some campaign gameplay of Halo Infinite. No pre-record smoke and mirrors BS as Johnson would say, but actual legit gameplay of Halo Infinite. This revealed so much that we will go into detail in further videos, guys. There's so much to unpack when it comes to those video, the gameplay itself. In this one, I'm gonna give you the blog update that goes along with this post. So if you missed this on Halo Waypoint, I'm gonna break it all down for you right here. So the first thing they go into is talking about how the current situation, it's pretty crazy, right? Yes, 2020 has been pretty insane. Uh, but they also go into talking about the banished that are gonna be in this game. This is our first time officially seeing them in the game. Yes, we had a little bit of a teaser showing the uh, the just tag designation foe line right there. It certainly was interesting. Confirm the banish, yes, but now we actually see them in the game and they do look pretty freaking awesome. And we did see the trailer where they were landed into the ground of the ring right over here and playing against the banish. Apparently what's happening is that this is taking place you know, a few days after Chief is being rescued and the banish are actually pursuing the Chief and the pilot as well. Uh, as the At the end, they introduced a new brute war chief of Isharam who is a get just the big bad guy, he's the main villain. We knew know who the main villain of Halo Infinite is, so which is pretty dang exciting. We didn't see anything when it comes to the Prometheans or anything like that, so I don't know if these guys are going to be making it into the game as well, but maybe we'll see what happens. 343 does go on to mention about how the story of Halo Infinite is going to be one that's going to be very inviting to new people as this game is looking to be a spiritual reboot of the franchise, so it's got a good, going to be a good entry point, yet it's going to continue the story that was you know, the storyline that we've been doing with the Reclaimer sagas after Halo 5. This actually takes place two years after the events of Halo 5. Now, I'm really glad to see 343 do this, as I would like to see them continue the story rather than just completely retcon what happened in Halo 5 or maybe even Halo 4 and just start everything new. All the things in the past didn't happen. Like, no, that happened in the universe. Like, I want that stuff to still matter. I want those games and moments I had in those games to still mean something so many years later. And I'm glad they're doing that with this game where it's going to be continuing the story arc that we left off in Halo 5. Yeah, it's going to be a really great starting point for a lot of new or returning fans who have been away for too long. Now, what I mentioned earlier about the flighting process process might not be happening for Halo Infinite. Well, they go into it on this blog post stating that uh, with Halo Infinite, we are also committed to building the game in a partnership with our community. But given the unprecedented challenges of this year, we're not quite where we expected to be in terms of broader public flighting. Though this doesn't mean that 343 is not taking in community feedback while developing this game. They mentioned about how they are working with the community down to like the art style, gameplay, the feel of the game, just everything is up for you know suggestions by the community. Though they're working with a much more confidential group of people, much smaller group of people, as well as kind of was I was expecting with this. I mean, with they mentioned originally with the flighting process of Halo Infinite that it was gonna start out very small and then grow to something larger. Continuing on, they say in this blog post, the team is still working and assessing options for broader hands-on opportunities before launch and we'll share an update when we can. So instead of having like a flighting process that we will We've been accustomed to like we saw with MCC coming to PC, I think what we might see is maybe like a demo beta reveal kind of thing towards like maybe like a month or less or a couple weeks maybe before the actual release of the game. Obviously knowing this kind of information and maybe seeing some of the visuals of the game as well, it's kind of shown that how uh, the effects of COVID have really messed with the development cycle of this game or maybe something like a flighting process would be kind of difficult to pull off when it comes to the Halo 
infinite, it would be a much different process when it comes to confidentiality for sure. But there is an upside though that does sound like there might be kind of like what another few game companies are doing, having a public test realm kind of situation with Halo Infinite. Once Halo Infinite releases, it's not going to be the only time you'll be able to play an early build of the game, it sounds like, as there looks like they'll be doing flighting processes throughout the lifespan of Halo Infinite. So you'll be able to test out the game before the full patch comes in, basically kind of known as PTRs, or Public Test Realms. We've seen this with uh, Battlefield 4 back in the day when that was being uh, you know, tested up and fixed. I think it's still happening right now with Halo, with uh, Battlefield 5. Uh, I've seen it with Diablo 3 back in the day when they were testing out a lot of different things with that game as well. And also with uh, various other game franchises, they do have these public test realms where you have to be invited to, but they're basically early builds that you get to play out before a new patch or update comes into the game, which I think is gonna be very important for the life cycle of this game as a whole. So I think having a public test realm flighting process is absolutely needed for a game like Halo Infinite. And I'm very very excited to see that they are doing these kind of steps with it as well. Another bit of information I was really looking forward to seeing more on the stream itself, but we didn't get that, but I was assuming we'll probably get more details on this blog like we just did. And now it's about the slip space engine and what that will allow for development when it comes to Halo Infinite. As 343 spent a lot of time and effort and development time making this engine that's so highly modular for the game itself that where almost anything can be fixed. As a previous leak mentioned, I made a video on saying that nothing is absolute when it comes to Halo Infinite, as many things can change. But they state in how this slip space engine and the power of the Xbox Series X has allowed the Halo world that we're going to be playing in to be larger than the environments of Halo 4 and Halo 5 combined, which is absolutely insane. That's so crazy to think about. They also mentioned about being able to pack in 10 times the processing per pixel when it comes to this game on top of that, which is just insane. And mentioning how the campaign will should be running at a flawless 60 fps with up to 4k resolution 4k 60 fps on a console that's kind of insane. Also, this blog post does confirm that Halo Infinite will be an open world game. And this quote right here, I'm going to say that the demo shows off just a small section of the open and expensive world we've created to deliver an epic Master Chief experience. The scale of the environment accessible to players is several times larger than that of the last two Halo games combined, with the opportunity to discover hidden rewards and assault banished fortifications in brand new ways. So this is going to be a Halo experience we've never had before. This is going to be, again, like I keep using this word, but it's going to be insane. Mentioning an open and expansive world, obviously open world right there pretty much, and crafted, deliver an epic Master Chief experience. It does confirm that this is going to be a Master Chief focus played game, which is exactly what we needed after what we played in Halo 5. Now I'm sure two things you guys are very curious about is the grapple hook and that bubble shield like wall thing that was created. Well, they go into a little more detail about this as well. To call it the drop wall, which is basically what we saw earlier, gets picked up and you get to use it as a way of defense. Now the, and they also mentioned about the grapple shot, which is what it's called in the game, about how it allows traversing in different ways to encounter your enemies. They do, conf they do term these as equipment. And they do mention about how it can you know, allow different kinds of play styles and things like that. But when it comes to like the multiplayer side of things, that there'll be pickups or something like that you can modify within the game. So it's not going to be a default ability that you'll see on every character. Though they seem like the grapple shot is a default ability in campaign, it's not going to be like that in multiplayer. It can be like a pickup kind of op option for uh, for players. Now, well, how that grapple shot is actually used, it's up to how the community molds it, man. Because like I said, slip space engine and nothing is also absolute. Like you can modify it quite a bit, it seems. So the functionality that you saw in the campaign reveal is not going to be the same for multiplayer. So if you have your concerns about the grapple shot or the drop ball or just equipment in general, trust me, that can certainly change with multiplayer, which I think is absolutely necessary. You need to have you know your own kind of balance and gameplay for the campaign, but you really need to be able to modify your gameplay for your multiplayer on the fly almost for how fast things need to be updated nowadays and how people can receive things and act out different ways when it comes to uh, come across new parts of the game. So I'm really glad to see 343 is taking that into consideration of being able to balance your multiplayer and balance your campaign in two completely different ways. Lastly, we're gonna round off on the platforms that Halo Infinite is gonna be available on, which is probably the most expansive platform device 
grouping that the game has ever been available on. He has it right here on the blog post saying Halo Infinite will be available on Windows 10, Xbox Game Pass for PC, which is like a beta, Steam as well. On top of that, we got the Xbox Series X and the Xbox One family of devices. They do mention that how they're looking to create a best in class experience optimized on the PC. So ultimately, it sounds like if you want to have your game look the absolute best, you're gonna to wanna to play on PC as I will have special specs and special features for that game on PC, which is gonna be absolutely awesome. I'm planning to get the game on PC, so I'm very, very excited about this. And also keep in mind, we also had a notification that PC and console will be able to play together. Crossplay is confirmed with Halo Infinite. So as long as you're playing on a Microsoft-like device, even Windows or Game Pass or Series X, or Xbox One, you'll all be able to play together, which is absolutely crucial for this game to succeed. So that was the massive news dump when it comes to Halo Infinite. Now we do have a lot more to talk about. We haven't even broken down the gameplay of this commentary, guys. So we're gonna have to get that into a separate video, just kind of showcasing bit by bit, scene by scene, exactly what's being shown. And then on top of that, we're gonna do a video, basically kind of giving the community feedback on what we saw in the gameplay. So we have tons of Halo Infinite content coming out for you guys. Make sure you subscribe to keep yourselves updated with all that awesome Halo ness. If you miss any content for me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.